let's just call this video as prototype chaining or chaining of prototype and it's going to become another jargon word of javascript okay before we get started first and foremost no i'm not talking about subscribe i'm talking about all those people who are jumping into the videos here and there uh, the videos are actually sequentially available on my website LearnCore Online. I'm trying my best to keep them in order in YouTube as well, but it sometimes is difficult. I'm trying my best. So make sure you watch them in order, otherwise things are not going to make much of the sense. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this code that we wrote in the last video. So we now know the syntax of this user through the functional way. We can actually create another instances of these objects. Hitesh and Sam is here. And now we were also able to inject some of the properties later on inside the object. This property right now is just a function, but it can be a simple property just like a variable. It is 100% doable. Now notice here there is a potential issue in the code here. Now surely this is not crashing here, but there is a potential case of that. I'm accessing this Hitesh.get first name. And maybe maybe the first name that you are trying to access here is there is no property it says first name me and when i save this one here this is going to give us not the error but actually much worse than the error if i run this code again it says course count is two but when you're trying to access the first name it says undefined and undefined is really bad and even worse than having error having error is okay i know something is wrong but having undefined means a lot of things Probably first name is, was never set. Probably first name property doesn't exist. Probably first name property was never injected nicely. There are a whole lot of scenarios I can judge on this. So writing the code which actually checks out all these things is always a better case. So first and foremost, let's fix this name me to name again so that our existing code works nicely. And now we need to study that what are the precautions that are given to us or we can have it from here. Let's go into the browser and try to have this one again. So I'm going to go ahead and say that again, we're going to have an LCO, which is going to be an object and it's going to have a property of name. And that name is my name, Hitaish. There we go. You don't need to do this. Just have a look on this and you'll understand this. Now, when I do this and I try to print out the LCO, it gives me not only Hitaish, but it also gives me this proto. And this is going to get a whole lot of clarity to you uh, as we move on to another example at the last part of the video. But notice here, I can open this up and it has a lot of options that is giving me. Constructor, has on property, is prototype of, and a lot of other things like getters and setters. Notice here one interesting thing. It gives me as something has own property. If I open this up, it gives me that name, the length, so I can actually ask it that how many properties you are having. I can ask it how many properties like has on property dot length. It's going to give me one. I can also ask it a name as well. And further, this can also be drilled down into more properties and it can gives me a whole lot of things. But notice very interestingly that how we're going to use this one. So let's close this one. I'm going to say LCO and I'm going to put a dot. As soon as I put a dot, I can access all these things which are inside Proto. I don't need to say lco.prototype dot. I can directly access them. Keep that in mind. And now I can say has own property. When I say has own property, I can put a parenthesis and ask for any property that you are looking for. For example, do you have name property defined in you? It gives me true. But if I just ask it something like, do you have something like first name? It says, no, I don't have it. Based on this knowledge, I can rewrite my code, which is less error prone. For example, I can come here and I can, before asking this Hitesh.get first name, I can actually cut this out and I can just write a conditional run. And in the conditional, I'm going to say that whatever the object you have created, there it was LCO, here it is Hitesh. I can say has own property. Make sure you write that in all same casing has own property just like this. So make sure you keep an eye on this has own property. O is in uppercase letter P is in the uppercase. Okay. So has its own property. And now I want to ask that do you have this property, which is a first name. And if that property only exists, then I'm going to say get first name is called up here. Is it any difference than this call here? This call is a blunt call. I don't know what's going to happen. This call, I know this is for sure. If this property exists, then only I'm going to call this one. So this is honestly a better code. Let's go ahead and run this one. And again, we see exactly the same. But what happens? What happens? 
if I'm asking for something, do you have a property like name me? When I run this one, I never called this method because I'm asking for the wrong property here. And same I can do if you have this property and not, and definitely these things can help you a lot. Okay, so this is now you understand that why there are so many of these properties given to us and what kind of use they actually makes. Now these things are making sense to you that why they are actually here. But there is another way I can show you that these are gonna make much more sense. And in fact, we have been using them already. Let me show you that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's just call this as uh, var. I'm gonna call this my a for my array shorthand. And I'm gonna literally just assign some values to it. Two, three, four. It doesn't really matter, you can have any values. And now notice here when I say my a, it gives me that these are your array, but notice when I open this up, and yes, in JavaScript, everything is kind of object. You get all these values, but you say dot length is here. And that is the reason whenever you de define any array, you are able to just call a length directly and it gives you the result because it is a property being assigned to you. Not only that, we have this proto object and it has a whole lot of things that we have been talking about like fill and filter, it has every, it has for each, flat, pop, push, and that is the reason why they are directly available to you. So JavaScript actually goes behind the scene and inject all of them inside this proto or prototype for you. And in case you write your own method that you want that everybody should have an access of it, you can actually go ahead and inject that into directly of the array. And then every array that is being created in your project is gonna have access to your custom defined method. And that is where the true power of JavaScript, these objecty things gets unlocked. I know, again, too much of the information, but I hope you are enjoying them, uh, these uh, talks. They are pretty nice, but some people really like all the time, just write, keep on writing the code. These are the talks that makes you a good programmer because you understand what is actually happening. And yeah, I get it. Some people find it really boring. No offense in that. It's okay. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope you have already hit that subscribe. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.